everyone. Final day. Final two hours, I think. <laughs> Has everybody had a good week? <laughs> awesome. Okay, so I'm Warren, and uh, I'm an Azure MVP, as well as an Office Apps and Services MVP. And today I'm going to be talking about network virtual appliances inside of Azure. Now, you guys know what network virtual appliances are? Okay, fantastic. Okay, so then my job's done. <laughs> um, so the idea is I'm going to go through a couple of assumptions based on some experiences I've had when deploying these network virtual appliances. Because sometimes it's not as easy as you think because Azure's networking is just really, really good. And it does everything for you. It's all automatic. And so next thing you know, things are bypassing the firewalls when they shouldn't be. So some of my assumptions that you would ask is, you would, let's say, your CIO walks in the door, and he says, we're moving to Azure. Make it work. And then you're like, but I've got a managed service with a company. And this managed service, for instance, manages a Palo Alto or a checkpoint or whatever that case may be. Is. And then what happens is you don't know how to move this thing necessarily to the cloud and protect all of your environments. So you've got managed services around security. You need to push those Palo Alto logs somewhere. And where would they go? They need to go to a security operations center that's not necessarily inside of Azure. So how do we do that? right? And then at the same time, you could have some sort of NVA license. So for instance, if you've gone and just purchased your checkpoints, now you need to move to cloud, you can take those checkpoint licenses and you can move them to Azure. Then the next question you ask is, how many environments do you have? And now if you guys know anything about Azure networking, you will know that a network virtual appliance or a firewall is essentially just a VM, right? So this VM is attached to a virtual network. The virtual network is what needs to connect the resources together. So if you've got separate virtual networks, you have to peer things. If you peer things, it opens up all sorts of holes, right? Because M Microsoft's going to do all that networking for you. So how do you take your UAT environments and your test environments and get them through the firewall as well? Because the firewall can't be on multiple VNets at the same time or in multiple subscriptions, right? Because you want to keep your subscriptions separate. So then what you have to go and do is put in some sort of a hub and spoke model. Everybody know what the hub and spoke model is inside of Azure? And so as a result, you'd create a central hub VNet, and you would put your shared resources inside there and then peer the specific environments to the hub VNet, you know, and then obviously put your express route in there as well. So next thing is whether you want to become, if you want to use pay as you go with regards to your licenses, it's something that's also possible because then it gives you flexibility to increase and decrease those NVAs as you need. So like I said, make sure that you choose your topology before you deploy, OK? There's no point in deploying your hub VNet, and then you've used the wrong address space, or you can't add any UDRs, or whatever the case may be. Make sure that you understand how many environments you have, and then also do some sort of cost analysis. Because you must remember now, because you're doing across VNet traffic, you're going to end up paying for that traffic because it's leaving the VNet. So your hub and spoke methodology is going to cost you more. But you gain the advantage of having it go through the firewall. Right? And then you guys know what a UDR is, right? Great. OK, so use a defined route. OK? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and show you the deployment of a Palo Alto inside of Azure. But I'm going to show you the easy way, right? So if I kill the show, the great thing about using Apollo Alto template is that it adds all the UDRs for you. It creates the VNet. It creates this particular example I'm going to show you is also going to create a database server and a web server. And then it's going to specify the routes for you so that you can go in and you can have a look and see exactly what it's deployed. So, oops, Wi-Fi. So 
if you go through to GitHub, you go through to Palo Alto Networks, and you go through to Azure, there we go, you will see that inside of the Azure repo, you'll see that there's different scenarios on how you can deploy these devices. So if you require an active-active configuration, you can choose the one that has an application gateway, and then what it'll do is it'll create the load balancers on the inside for you as well. So, but in this case, I'm gonna choose just the two-tier sample, and you'll see it even gives us a diagram about how this is going to be deployed. Then all we do is we click the Deploy to Azure button, and we're good to go. And then we can just specify the resource group, the storage account name, the DNS name, the web server name, firewall VM name, and so on. And then what you can do is you can lock down the external IP address for the management of the firewall. I've gone ahead and I've pre-deployed this. So if we go here, You will see what it's gone and done is it's created the database VM for me, it's created a web server for me, and it's created the firewall itself. It's also then gone and attached the correct network interfaces to the different subnets inside the VNet. Because with the Palo Alto, you'll have your management, you'll have your trust, and you'll have your untrust, and those will be connected to the specific subnet. And then the coolest part about the template is it goes and it creates the UDR for you. Right? So this user-defined route is incredibly important because that is what's going to push the traffic through the firewall. If you don't have this there, that firewall is just going to sit there and do nothing. And you need to be very careful about that tick box over there. Because in certain scenarios, when that is enabled as it is now, and there's, v uh, there's gateway propagation, what can happen is stuff can start bouncing over the firewall. So for instance, if you have something like an express route and you, do some, uh, and you don't do the gateway propagation, it breaks completely. So just be very careful with that box because sometimes if let's say the UDR or the firewall is not seeing the traffic, just check that box. Okay, so you'll see what's happened is the routes have been attached to the specific subnet. Now what we can go and do is we can go and see effective routes. Now effective routes is your friend. Because effective routes is going to tell you whether the route is actually applying to that network card, right, of that specific machine. So you can see over here there's a user-defined route, you can see it's active, and you can see that the default route is now pointing to the specific firewall. So we know that the database server is now going through the firewall. You can also get to this if you choose the virtual machine itself. So in this case, if we go to the database, well, let's actually go to the other one. So if we go to the web server, and we go networking, and you click on the network interface, and you click on effective routes, this will now show you the routes that are on that specific network card. Now, something also to be very mindful of, reboot an IaaS machine when applying a UDR so that it does take effect. Okay. And that is how you deploy a Palo Alto with UDRs inside of Azure and then go and check the configuration to see how it's done. Then what you can go and do is you can obviously go and modify this template to suit your own needs. So what we could do is we could go in and change some of those parameters, and then we'll be able to customize and redeploy this and then use it in some sort of a DevOps pipeline if we wanted or whatever the case may be is. To discuss it in just a little bit more detail and to recap what we did there in the demo, is use your vendor templates. There is a reason that the vendor has those templates because there's a good chance that there's an updated piece of the deployment script that is sitting in GitHub that was checked in two days ago, or the image itself is being pulled from another location and it's the latest version of the firewall. 
So make sure you use the templates that the vendor supplies, because maybe there's some sort of configuration on the VM that also needs to be applied. So use that. Again, you can customize them so that you can create your own templates. Then be careful with platform as a service as well. Platform as a service, as you know, if you attach platform as a service to a VNet with VNet integration, you can't place a UDR. So you cannot route that through the firewall unless, of course, you go ASC. And ASC, which is an app service environment, is much more expensive. So again, then what's happening is you are taking into account functionality or security versus cost. All right? Um, and again, like I said, be careful of Azure awesomeness because their networking is great. And it will work. And it will probably end up passing the firewall the first time. All right. When it comes to troubleshooting, as I said, effective routes is your friend. Remember to reboot your infrastructure as a service. Be careful with your platform as a service. And then private link is in preview. So private link is in preview, which gives us private endpoints on specific platform as a service services. And it's going to allow us to interact with them when it comes to using a network virtual appliance. And with that, that is me. Thank you very much. Please go ahead and